to really be a walking computer. So I've always been a tech enthusiast, and I always try to be on the cutting edge of technology. So that drove Brandon DeLawley to do what some might believe only takes place in a science fiction movie. It gets inserted into your skin. A chip, and not the type you eat, but a microchip has been implanted in Brandon's left hand. This one is just a little guy right there. Yeah, I see that right there. Yeah. Definitely. So after that was inserted and it, the swelling went down, uh, I'm able to open up the front and back door to my house. I can uh, walk up to people and have them tap their phone to my hand and instantly transfer my contact information, my portfolio, my COVID vax card. But Brandon got to thinking, why stop there? He's got two hands, right? And plenty of room for more chips. So I thought, how cool would it be if I could leave my house, no car key, no house key. So two weeks ago, right here in Michigan, Brandon got another chip implanted, this one in his right hand, to unlock and start his Tesla. It's a perfect backup, something you can never forget, something that doesn't break, uh, something that won't fail you. And if you think having chips implanted in your body requires a doctor or is costly, well, think again. The chips themselves are anywhere from between two and three hundred dollars, and the install only ran me about a hundred dollars because you can go to a local piercing shop who will obviously agree to do the installation. All the programming and coding of putting the apps on the chip, that's all done by me. Moving forward, Brandon is thinking about having other chips implanted in his body. So it'll be inserted right under or right over your breast, and then you can tap your phone to your chest and instantly get temperature readings and with all this talk about chips brandon hopes the chip for the tesla gets the attention of you know who it would make all this worth it if maybe just like a thumbs up from elon or something or a simple emoji i don't know that'd be pretty cool idea the technology is rfid and nfc which is near field communication so the rfid side is what has my student id and that's what a lot of the security systems where you put a key card up to a door and it unlocks it. Um, the NFC is something that's in almost all phones now, where if your phone can do Google Pay, Apple Pay, any of that, it has NFC. And what that means is if you put your phone up to my hand, it adds my contact to your phone. And there's other things I'm able to have it do, and I can reprogram it with my phone instantly. I can't feel them. I, I would never know, but if I, like, I can feel that there's an implant in there and you can, like, you can see it right there, kind of, especially against the skin. The overall reaction from my peers has been pretty positive. I've had some relatives who were more confused as to why I would do it, and I have one uncle who is very, like, suspicious of everything, and I can't wait to see him this Thanksgiving because he's going to have a lot to say. I use isopropyl alcohol to do clean off everything beforehand. I use the wipes in the area where it would be going in. And then essentially I just, I just laid my hand down and used one that got it in there. <laughs> I was a little nervous, but before being computer science, I was pl planning to go into pre-med. So I already had a lot of experience with using medical equipment like this. I don't have a ton of experience cause I was still in high school, but I had enough to where I was confident in not like killing myself with it. <laughs> it is a great conversation starter. I've been in classes with like, all right, everyone, what's your name and a fun fact about you? Usually it's hard to top something like this. <laughs> so make a fist to squeeze the tag to the top of my skin. When I approach the device. It opens the Facebook page I sent it to. Colin Corvino has a microchip implanted in both of his hands. Some people just look really grossed out. I put my hand up and I let them poke at it and they freak out. Developed in the 1950s and 60s, RFID chips, short for radio frequency identification, have been used by retailers to track packages and prevent theft. Farmers use the chips to keep tabs on their livestock. Pet owners use them to identify their cats and dogs. And lately, members of the so-called body hacker movement have been implanting RFID chips under their skin, programming them to perform various tasks. Colin Corvino, a smartphone repairman in Brooklyn, New York, uses his chips to open his front door. He found them on a website called Dangerous Things that sells implant kits and offers user tips. Well, I came across it when I was doing research on the Samsung deadbolt that I bought. And then the first thing that I noticed was that I could get an RFID tag that would work with the deadbolt. Corvino plans to modify one of his motorcycles next. And 
I haven't decided on where I want to put the authenticator, the antenna. I'm thinking probably down by the seat somewhere because this comes off. So I would just tap my hand on it and the light would come on as if I put the key in. And then I would just hit the ignition and start the vehicle. RFID retailers estimate that between 30 and 50,000 people worldwide have chip implants in their bodies. German tech consultant Andreas Schostrom used his chip as a boarding pass on a recent flight from Stockholm to Paris and to get into an airport VIP lounge. Skeptics say the implants raise privacy issues and worry that strangers could tap into the information on a chip without the owner's knowledge. Others say potential uses for the technology, such as keeping track of a patient with dementia, could pose ethical concerns. But Corvino and others see a future where technology and the human form will merge. I think when it becomes more prevalent and there's a lot more things and options that you can do with this, that people will, you know, opt in for that kind of augmented human sort of attitude. That's why I have an Android device and not an iPhone is because I want to be able to customize everything I have, so why should I not be able to customize myself? This Revelations 13 and 16, and he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name here is wisdom let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast for it is the number of a man and his number is six hundred three score and six this is uh, where six 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 comes from Shalom, Kahala Yahweh, Bashem Yashai, Bashem Rakam Pradash. Tomorrow is my teachers, the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the elect, who the house of David be born again in this generation. And Shalom to the one third of Yasharala, who today are known as the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, who before losing our true heritage, we were known as and still are the true Hebrew Israelites of the Holy Bible. In today's lesson, we're going to talk about how the microchip implants which are coming are being normalized among society. And we just watched a couple of videos that show how the implantable RFID chips, which are the, the mark of the beast, right? Because again, now those particular ones there, those aren't necessarily the... the the mark of the beast and that's because that isn't given by Esau right these are you know self implanted unless you know they have a secret you know deal with the, the government but the point being is that when the overall system the worldwide system that they're putting into place right the world economic forums right the the, the true leaders of the world right the, the the Bible refers to them as the Edomites once they set up their world's economic system and social credit system and identification system, the same one that Trump talks about, the same one that the European uh, Union um, political people say that we need, the, one, the same one that the Queen of Netherlands said that we desperately needed, is they're talking about this worldwide issue ID, which eventually will be issued and mandatory to be placed on an RFID chip that's either in, planted in your hand or in your head, okay? And we know about Elon Musk's Neuralink, right? The the brain implant, and he's only one of many companies out there worldwide that are that are developing these chips. Now they've already had these chips; they they developed them for a while now, but now they're getting ready to pitch them to the the people. And how easy will it be? for them to push the, the mark of the beast upon the people than to already have it introduced into society, have it being brought up as a cool, hip, high-tech thing to do. And look, you could open up your Tesla uh, door and oh look, you could, you'll could you never forget your keys. And oh look, you'll, you'll be able to leave your credit card and your ID behind. See, all these things, these devils are, are planning right to ensnare the inhabitants of the world and, and this ultimately goes back to a levitical law that explains that if a, a master had a slave that 
um, that had met his seven years of, of captivity or servitude, he was, you know, then obliged to set him up and set him free, right? And then decide if he wanted his, uh, uh, if that slave, however, wanted to stay with the master because let's say he had uh, a wife and children under that captivity. Well, that means that those children aren't the slaves. They belong to the master of the house and some slaves would want to just stay at the house, you know, attach them themselves to the master uh, or basically to that household and live amongst their family and, you know, be part of like the, the household, right? And what they would do is, it tells you in the Bible how you would have to take a, a yule, which is basically like an ice pick, and the master would drive it through the ear of the, of, of the slave into the doorpost of the house, you know, materialistically signifying that the slave has now joined himself onto the master's household and and uh that's what ultimately this mark of the beast is you see and and um that's what these edomites are ultimately trying to do they want to ultimately make a perpetual slave out of all the the people of the world where they're going to be in perpetual rulership but again what does the bible tell us it tells us that the lord is going to destroy their plans. Right? This is uh, Job 20 and 23. When he is about to fill his belly, God shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him and shall rain it upon him while he is eating. And this is ultimately Job describing or giving like a, a description of what the, the wicked, right? Basically the Edomites that we know of now as the Edomites in this end of days, because right? that's the whole, uh, like, that's the thing about the Bible, right? You're, you're given, um, one of the mysteries of the Bible is that you have to figure out who is the wicked, right? That being, who is the wicked nation, right? The children of Satan. And that would be none other than the, the Edomites, right? The biblical name for the so-called Caucasian race, which also includes the so-called Israelis, because they're the same people. They descend from the same, same person, that being Esau, Right, the wicked twin brother of Jacob, who us Israelites, the Negro, Latino, Native Americans descend from. Okay, well, in this case here, Job was telling us, he was prophesying that the Lord would eventually destroy these devils, these Edomites, when they are about to fill their belly. Not necessarily meaning that they're gonna, when they're about to get, you know, finish eating, but when they're about to finish their agenda of world domination and planting the entire world with the, the, the you know, biometric IDs that they're going to call them. Or I'm sure they're going to have some sort of hip marketed, you know, PR tested name for these. But, you know, when they start to initiate them, they're going to get a good chunk of, of the world. They're going to get two thirds of the world. Okay. And, and everything that they need from, you know, taking their, their snake bites, which has changed people's, you know, uh, you know, genome, right? They're no longer, uh, what is the Bible tells us in uh, Genesis, right? The whole earth had corrupted its flesh. Well, that's happening again, okay? And people are doing it spiritually, uh, physically, right? There's people who are cutting off limbs to, to get on biometric uh, implants. It's crazy, right? We are living in a crazy time when wickedness has fully grown up, as the Bible tells us. Right? And though it seems like it's, it's going to be a, a, a bad ending, remember the Bible tells us right here that these devils are going to ultimately pay for the wickedness. And what's going to happen to them? Well, they're going to rain. The Lord is going to rain down these nukes upon these devils. Okay, Because World War III is going to break out. All this escalation that we're seeing right now between uh, you know the, the West and the East is going to continue. And... Um, there is an image today, a map, showing the U.S. Uh, naval forces around the Levant, around the Middle East. And they're everywhere, man, especially off the coast of Iran. So this thing's about to kick off, Akim, and I'm sure when we get closer to the elections, things are only going to get hotter. Let's read this. This is James 4 and 7. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So remember, Akim. When they start, when they collapse the economy and they let chaos reign for a bit and then they bring out the solution, 
it's just going to simply be digital money, which you'll be able to use with your phone and you know your email and whatnot. And I'm sure there's going to be some sort of digital government ID that they're going to issue you, kind of like the new social security number or something like that, right? But all these real IDs are tied to basically. Well, eventually, and, and that's fine to go with that, right? We got to survive in the system. But what it is not okay to do, Akim, but we got to make sure that we step off that train before it you know, goes into the station, is when they say that this ID, this system that they've created, this straw man that they've created for you to operate in this new world order, when they say that has to go inside of you through some biometric ID, be it through a chip, a brain implant, right, or some micro dots or all these different things, that's when you got to decline. That's when you have to understand that this is the mark of the beast coming to you in, like the apostle said, right, in those RFID implantable chips that they've been popularizing and normalizing. So, hope this video was edifying, Akim, right? Be circumspect. These devils are about to push this agenda, so when it comes out, understand what it is. So, hope this video was edifying. Until next time, let's give all of your glory and praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahshai, Bashem, Rukhakur, Dash, Shalom.